कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम देर आर टू वर्ड्स यूज इन भगवद गीता वन इज द विभूति एंड द सेकंड इज द एसेंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन भगवान से इज यदादित्य गर्दम थे जहा जगत भाषे थे खिलम एंड सो ऑन दिस वॉज रेफर्ड एज द विभूति द ग्लोरी ऑफ परमात्मा इन द फॉर्म ऑफ डिफरेंट एक्सप्रेशन मैनिफेस्टेशन वी मीन्स विशेष भूति is the manifestation so this is the special manifestation where the greatness of the lord is recognized do you remember in the 10th chapter bhagwan said yad yad vibhuti mat satvam shri mata murjita meva va tat tat eva va sambhatvam tat tat eva va gachhatvam ममो तेज अंश संभव व्हाट एवर व्हाट एवर यू सी इन दिस वर्ल्ड श्रीमद ऊर्जित में वा विभूति मत सत्व सत्व थिंग्स विच आर एक्जिस्टिंग विभूति मत असोसिएटेड विथ सम स्पेशल प्रेजेंटेशन सच एज श्रीमद ऊर्जित एक्सेट्रा सो दिस इज वन विभूति द सेकंड इज द एसेंस वट इज द एसेंस रसोहम सु कौंदे प्रभास्मी शशि सूर्य देन अहमात्मा गुड़ा केश दिस इज द एसेंस ऑफ द थिंग्स नाउ दिस एसेंस इज बोथ द एसेंस एज वेल एज द विभूति आर द मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ द सेम इनफाइनेट रियालिटी विभूति इज स्पोकन फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज an essence is spoken from the point of view of the greatness of individual category like in the waters i am the rasa etc now there is third thing and that is the essential nature and that essential nature is the ultimate so we have to ultimately reach this essential nature of hours and for that purpose is this 15th chapter therefore bhagwan says yat tat padam sarvasya avabhasakam api agnya adityadikam jyotihi na avabhasayate yat prapta cha mumukshavah punah samsara bhi mukha na nivartante yasya cha padasya upadi bhedam अनुविधीयमाना जीवा घटाकाश आदय इव आकाश से अंशा तस् पद से सर्वात्म सर्व्यवहारास्पद विवक्षु चतुर्भ श्लोके विभूति संक्षेप आह भगवान् सो दिस यद्वान्न निवर्तंते दिस एब्सल्यूट रियालिटी विच कैनॉट बी इल्यूमिंड बाय एनी मीन्स ऑफ knowledge having reached where there is no more coming back to this relative existence which was sought after by the jivas so this vibhuti is being told to make us aware in vyavahar in our day to day life the presence of the divinity and in that we started from the sun the moon the fire the earth the food the digestion power and ultimately we have come sarvastha chaham rudi sannivishtaha 
one type of the meaning as told by Bhagwan Jankaracharya we have seen. Let us dig further. Sarvasya chaham rudi sannivishto Matta smrutir jnanam pohanancha Vedaischa sarvairahameva vedyo Vedanta krud veda videva chaham In fact, Adhi Daivik and Adhyatmik are the same. They are not different. For example, when we talk about Yat Aditya Gatam Tejaha Jagat Bhasete Kilam, so there we are talking about the Adhi Daivik son. And when the same son is recognized with reference to the creation, the beings, the same sun is called as the vision in the eyes. So, at the causal level, totality level, samashti level is Adi Daivik. And at the individuality level, it is Adhyatmik. See how simple it is. It is not different. So, we have seen in this mantra, Sarvasya Chaham Rudhi Sannivishtaha Matta Smriti Jnanama Puhalancha. Bhagavan has told here that Sarvasya Prani Jatasya Ham Atmasan Buddha Sannivishtaha Sarva Prani Ram Smriti Jnanam Apohanam Cha. So I enter the hearts of everybody in the, through the intellect and responsible for their memory, knowledge, and forgetfulness. This is one thing. Now let us go deeper. Bhagavan says, Sarvasya cha aham rudi sannivishtaha. We have seen in our uh, Aitya Upanishad, having created Karya Karanatmak Srishti. What is the Karya Karanatmak Srishti? Karya is the gross body and Karana are the Bahishkaranas and Antakaranas. Bahishkaranas are the ten faculties. And Antakkaran includes the mind as a collective noun or the Antakkaran Chatushte, Manavundhi Chitta Ahankar. This constitutes the inner instrument. Now Bhagavan having created Karya Karanatmak Srishti and then all these Devas presiding over every faculty they were associated with hunger and thirst. When they were associated with hunger and thirst, they say, now where we will go and sit down and how we will enjoy, please tell us. The so Lord said, you go to your respective places. So all those gods entered in the respective places. So the sun having become the eyes, meaning the vision, entered the sockets and became the eye. And so on. We have seen this in Aitri Upanishad. Now, after having everything created, then again Bhagavan thought, Madrute, without me, what for all this? So let me enter. And then he entered. Simanam Vidarya. He entered by opening the cranium. And how did he enter their Bhagavan's commentary? If you remember, Bhagavan Shakaracharya says, just like the sun enters the water and starts appearing as the reflection. In the same manner, this Paramatma Sarvasta Chaham Rudhi Sannivishtaha. So having created this Karya Karnatmak Srishti, and where do the Karya Karan belong? Where do the body and the internal external instruments belong karya karna kartrutve prakruti hi heturuchyate so bhagwan has having modified this prakruti into mahabhutanyahankaro buddhi 
up to these are the modifications of the prakriti and then these modifications further undergo um, subsequent modification and they are the ichcha dvesha sukham dukham sangata chetana dhruti etc now having created them the lord entered and established himself in the buddhi now here one very important principle lord as the existence is seen perceived recognized in everything but the lord as the enlivening factor the lord as the knowing factor becomes available only in the intellect like yesterday bhagwan shankara gave the example that yatha hi loke tulle api mukha samsthane na kashta kuddyado mukham avir bhavati if we stay in front of the wall etc we don't see our reflection in the wall but in the mirror we do in the same manner Although Paramatma is Satchidananda, but the expression of this Paramatma as Sat is possible under all conditions. But the expression of this Paramatma as Chaitanya is possible only in the Antakaran. Therefore, Paramatma enters this Buddhi Antakaran, which is like the two comparisons, the wall and the mirror, is a place where. the paramatma starts manifesting as the conscious reflection now to understand this take let us take an example if we take fire <coughs> fire has got two aspects one is light second is heat now when this fire is applied to water we take the water in a pan and keep the pan on the fire so what the water will absorb water will absorb only the heat aspect not the light aspect why so because that is the limitation of the conditioning called as water now the same fire if we apply to the wood so the wood will absorb both the things light as well as heat in the same manner the different conditioning such as the gross world etc is able to express only the existence aspect of the paramatma but existence plus knowledge sat and chit both are manifested in the antakaran and therefore here bhagwan says sarvasya chaham rudi sannivishtah rudi buddhau sannivishtah having manifested having entered now after this paramatma starts manifesting through the antakaran it will be existence plus knowledge and this existence plus knowledge together is called as the chidabhasa or the jiva bhav so this paramatma having entered the antakaran the chidabhasa and the jiva bhav starts manifesting now after this jiva bhav starts manifesting then thereafter as a result of this manifestation there are three fields of experience automatically created it is something like this there are three different gadgets in which electrical energy enters so when the electrical energy enters the fan motor then it starts manifesting as the magnetic field when the same electrical energy enters the bulb it starts manifesting as the light when the same electrical energy enters the amplifying instruments it starts manifesting as the sound amplifier so the different expressions of the same electrical energy is on account of the differences in the gadgets through which it is manifesting if this is understood in the same manner 
दीज पर ब्रह्म परमात्मा चैतन्य रूपेण एज द कॉन्शियस प्रिंसिपल इज मैनिफेस्टिंग थ्रू एवरीथिंग बट इन सम प्लेसेस इट इज एबल टू एक्सप्रेस ओनली एज एक्सिस्टेंस लाइक द ग्रॉस बॉडी थ्रू द फैकल्टीज आईज इयर द वेरियस फंक्शनिंग एंड इन द माइंड और द अंतकरण इट मैनिफेस्ट एज द जीव भाव मेक इट वेरी क्लियर टू योर सेल्फ एंड आफ्टर दिस जीव भाव इज मैनिफेस्टेड देन दिस जीव भाव हैज फर्दर थ्री एक्सपीरियंसेस एंड विच आर दो थ्री एक्सपीरियंसेस दे आर ज्ञानम स्मृति अपोहन च तो वॉट आर द थ्री एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ दिस जीव भाव ज्ञानम वेकिंग एक्सपीरियंस एंड स्मृति स्वप्न ड्रीम एक्सपीरियंस अपोहनम फॉरगेटफुलनेस द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द डीप स्लीप सी मत्त स्वति ज्ञानम अपोहन च Now, don't get lost in the individual understanding. Parabrahma Paramatma, when expressing through the eyes, is a vision. It's a common statement. Like when a student goes to the medical college and he studies the anatomy, so he doesn't study the anatomy of the dead body alone. He is studying the anatomy of human being as it is, although he is working on one dead body. but his understanding is with the total human body all the bodies in the same manner when we are understanding this that the reality expresses through the eyes as vision it should not be understood that we are talking about our vision no in the same manner this para brahma parmatma expressing through the antakaran as a chidabhasa thereby creating a phenomena called as the jiva bhava and this jiva bhava has this three planes of <coughs> experience the waking dream and deep sleep now in this where is i more see there is no place for the i that is why if we understand it in this manner then we will be in tune with what bhagwan sri krishna told in the 13th chapter kshetratnam chapi mam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharat so this phenomena that the parmatma expresses through the antakaran as the chidabhasa thereby creating another phenomena called as the jiva bhava and this jiva bhava undergoes the three planes of experiences jagra swapna sushupti mattah smriti dhyanam apohanam cha now this point i told you we have many wake dream uh, rather waking experiences we have many dream experiences and we have many deep sleep experiences we cannot say that one dream has any relation with other dream we cannot say one deep sleep has any relationship with other dream another deep sleep we cannot say one waking experience has any relation with other waking experience but we do say and then what happens as we do not create a dream personality on what ground we create the waking personality how important it is so once this is recognized then what will happen now we are understanding what bhagwan is telling here sarvastha jaham hrudi sannivishtah matta smritir jnanam bohanam cha so because of me the waking dream and deep sleep are existing in this world see 
He is not telling because of me, waker, dreamer, deep sleeper, they have no independent existence. Waker has existence only in the waking state. And what is the waking state? Jagratavastha. Jagratavastha has all these three components together. The waking world, the waking experience and the waker. So, Mattaha Smriti Dhyanam Apohanancha. So, all the waking dream and deep sleep experiences are because of me. See, Sarvasya Chaham Rudi Sannivishtaha Matta Smriti Dhyanam Apohanancha. Now, see where you reach. There is no more ego allowed to be born. Waker put together into a string of continuity, creating a garland of experiencers, and that seeming continuity is called as the ego. The best example I can think of is the neon lights or the what do you call this uh, small bulbs in a series it appears as if there is a movement but there is no movement it appears as if the uh, tire is running but the tire is not running it appears as if the fan is moving the fan is not moving in the same manner it appears as if there is a continuity of the experiences of the waker as one, but there is no continuity. Once this is recognized, then you will no more be persecuted by the so-called virus ego, ego, ego. Sarvastha chaham rudisannivishtaha Matta Smriti Rajnanam Apohanancha Now Vedaishya Sarvai Ahameva Vedyaha Now this word can be read, this sentence can be read in three, four ways. Vedaishya Sarvai Ahameva Vedyaha Second, Aham Vedyaha Eva Third, Aham Vedaihi Eva Vedyaha See? First of all we will take Vedaishya Sarvai Ahameva Vedya. So, this I, Mattaha Smriti Jnanam Apohanancha, this I, who is the supporter of the waking dream and the dream and the deep sleep experiences, he is to be known how Vedaishya Sarvai Ahameva Vedya. The purpose of all the Vedas is to recognize. Who is this Aham? You know the meaning of the word Aham? That's why the Sanskrit language is so rich and beautiful. A means no, not. Like Shoka, Ashoka. A means not. Ham means Hananam, destruction. That which can never be killed is Aham. See? So, Vedaishya Sarvai Aham Eva Vedyaha Aham, this indestructible principle has to be recognized. This is the only purpose of the study of the Vedas. This is the only theme that is dealt with in the Vedas. Do you remember in Shvetashvatar we have recently studied that if somebody has been studying Vedas all these years, and if he has not recognized this Paramatma, which is the main theme of the Vedas, you call it Paramatma, you call it Bhagwan, you call it Ishvara, you call it Absolute Reality, doesn't matter. If that is not recognized, all our studies had been total waste. Therefore, Vedaishya Sarvai Ahameva Vedyaha. So what is the theme of the scriptures he is to know this Absolute Reality. Now, how to know this absolute reality? If it is absolute reality, it cannot be known relatively. We can imagine the relations with the absolute. 
But in fact, there is no relationship with the absolute. With the absolute, there is only merging. Like you know, Santa Ganeshwar writes in his Amrita Anubhav when he is glorifying his Guru. He said, after glorifying the Guru, he says, "I salute to my Guru Maharaj Nirutti Nath by merging in him." like the wave salutes the ocean or the ornaments salute the gold now what do you wave or the uh, ornaments have to do to the salute the ocean or the gold only one thing what is that discard the criteria which separates them from their source what is that which is separating the ornament from the gold name and form what is that which is separating the wave from the ocean the name and the form therefore this nama roopatmak jagat when that is rejected second chapter of panchadashi pancha mahabhut vivek we come to discover the truth then the third chapter of panchadashi where we have seen pancha kosh vivek and when we discard the pancha koshas we come to the same substratum which we have reached in the second chapter because it is not different it is one and the same so vedaischa sarvai aham eva vedya that is the only purpose second thing aham vedya eva means what i am only to be known not created as a result of karma as a result of upasana as a result of any action as a result of any yoga because vidya eva vidya means that which is known is already existing it is not created see pramana janita jnanam that knowledge which is born out of the right means of knowledge is not created it is already existing so this is the meaning means what there is only some mistake because of which we are not able to recognize this divinity therefore aham vidya eva now the third meaning aham eva vidya other than knowing this reality there is nothing worthy of knowing in this whole world yes jnatva amrutam asnute all other knowledge is regarding the worldly affairs etc have no meaning you know if you remember if you have read commentary of swami akhandan ji maharaj on narad bhakti sutra which we were discussing there he mentions that if a student a seeker has started his <coughs> journey on the spiritual quest and is studying the upanishad and studying the different uh, books related to that and doing his sadhana according to that and if he goes and studies the ayurveda or homeopathy it is a vigna there is no need because aham eva vidya if there is something worthy of knowing only this nothing else so vedaischa sarvai aham eva vidya and the last mean aham vedaihi eva vidya there is no other way because the way our upanishads declare the truth there is no scripture in the world who can talk so clearly and distinctly about the truth and so boldly see if you want to understand what i am telling sometime don't get entangled in arguments but just observe when the people of different faith when they are talking about god they will never be able to go beyond a very little limit beyond that see they can't go beyond that they will be talking at the most love everybody we should be compassionate iman se rehna chahiye that's it 
They cannot go beyond that. They are not allowed. If somebody asks any question, the devil is talking through this boy. Keep away. Let us excommunicate him. Therefore, aham vedaihi eva vidyaha. It is only Vedas only very clearly say that having known the truth, you don't require Vedas. No other religion can have that boldness of telling the truth. So, Vedaishya Sarvai Ahame Vedyaha. And Sarvaihi is not only one particular Veda. All the Vedas talk about the same reality and it has to be known and that is only worthy of knowing, known and that alone can be known. Nothing can be done, created because of this. And the last thing, this reality has to be known as Aham, one's own essential self. Not objectively. Vedaishya Sarvai Rahameva Vedyaha now when this aham is correctly understood, then what will happen? Through every waking experience, I alone is expressing. Through every dream experience, I alone is expressing. Through every deep sleep experience, I alone is expressing. He who is established in this experience, then we understand the stories of Bhagwan Sri Krishna, when he uh, went to Draupadi and took one little piece of vegetable from that thali and ate it and as a result those 60,000 rishis who were sent by Duryodhanadi to take food from the Pandavas, they felt satiated of their hunger. Because Sarvastha Jaham Rudhi Sanni Vishtaha Matta Asprati Dhyanam Apohanancha Vedaishi Saravai Aham Eva Vedya This Aham was correctly recognized by the Lord. Therefore when Bhagavan Sri Krishna says Aham we should be very careful in what context he has said that. So when he says that uh, Name Parthasti Kartavyam Trishiloke Shukinchana when he says, Maya tatamidam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina, when he says, Same um, bhakta priyama, uh, bhakti man priyonaraha, when he says, Desham aham samudhartam rutyu samsara sagarad, see? So, when aham 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 is used by the Lord, it has got a different reference. And all the references are included in this ultimate Vedaishya Sarvai Ahameva Vedya. Now, Vedanta Krut, if I have to know this absolute self that I am, then how do I know Vedanta Krut, Vedanta Artha Sampradaya Krut? That means I can be known only if we study the Vedanta Shastra according to the um, lineage, shishya para, Guru Shishya Parampara. There is no way one has to go through this proper understanding. Otherwise, every one we will have their own imagination in understanding and only our views will be brought out. See, the human intellect is such that it can give us so much of freedom that the mantra remains the same but we bring out the meaning which is convenient to us. Okay? And if we bring out the meaning which is convenient to us, we are functioning under the influence of the Raga Dvesha, not wisdom. Therefore, Vedanta Krut and Ved Vidhi Vacha Aham and the one who knows this truth, he cannot remain other than me. So, knower of the truth is me. The means of knowledge through which I am known that Vedanta Shastra is me. The teacher who is teaching us, he is also the me. And this is me alone which is being spoken of in all the scriptures. And in this manner, Sarvatmya Bhavena, Sarvatmana, as the one 
absolute reality supporting the total field of relativity in this manner alone the truth has to be known there is no other way sarvastajaham radisan nivishtaha mattasmritir jnanam pohananch vedaischa sarvairaham eva vedyo vedanta krud veda videvachaham when we read this verse and while reading this verse if the understanding is clear it will merge into the absolute just like yatha nadya syandamana astam gachanti nama rupe vihay like the river merges in the ocean without making a noise discarding its name and form in the same manner our knowledge of aham as a limited being will merge in that aham apetakam nij vibhanakam the real nature will be revealed and when this is reached there is no noise that is why this example is given in the scriptures like the rivers merge in the ocean where the rivers merge in the ocean there is no noise that's why the wise people automatically become quiet as they are approaching the sea so this is the total understanding do not make or bring jiva anywhere in between अथ अधुना तस्व क्षर अक्षर उपाधि प्रविभक्तया निरुपाधिक केवल से स्वूप निर्दिधारिषया उत्तरश्लोका आरभ्य अतीत अनागत अंतर अध्यायाथ जातराशि आह नाउ after having completed this theme in the four verses how the vibhuti of the lord has to be recognized do you remember in the 10th chapter bhagwan has made one very important statement etam vibhutim yogam cha mama yo veti tatvatah sah avikampena yogena yujjate natra samjhaya so we have to recognize the parmatma both transcendental yoga imminent is the vibhuti etam vibhutim yogam cha yo tatvatah vetti so this is what was said yada aditya gadam tejo jagat bhasayate khilam from there up to sarvastha chaham hrdi sannivishta now if you take all of them put together it will indicate a very simple truth that the total changing phenomena called the world and the cause of this world maya prakriti etc all of them are subordinate to this absolute reality they are in me see in the ninth chapter but i am not in them i am far above them this transcendental aspect is now brought out from the 16th verse onward by the lord so uh, atha adhuna tasse eva of the same parmatma yad gatvan anivartante tad dham paramam mama that parmatma having reached where there is no return tasse eva parmatmanah akshara akshara upadhi pravibhaktataya निरुपाधिक केवल से स्वरूप निर्दिधारिषया सो दैट निरुपाधिक परमात्मा हु इज डिवाइडेड इन टू द क्षर एंड द अक्षर उपाधि हु इज डिवाइडेड बिकॉज ऑफ द कंडीशनिंग ऑफ दिस टू क्षर एंड द अक्षर उपाधि व्हाट इज द एसेंशियल नेचर ऑफ दिस परमात्मा टू डिसाइड कन्फर्म एंड टू कम द फाइनल कंक्लूजन the 16 onward verses start tatra sarvam eva atita anagata 
अंतर अंतराध्यायार्थ जातम त्रिधा राशि कृत्य एंड इन दिस लास्ट थ्री फोर वर्सेस ऑल दैट वाज सेड इन द अर्लियर चैप्टर्स ऑल दैट विल बी सेड इन द सब्सिक्वेंट चैप्टर्स एंड ऑल दैट इज सेड इन दिस चैप्टर इज नाउ समराइज अंडर थ्री हेड्स त्रिधा राशि कृत्य राशि मीन्स हेड लाइक यू नो वेन यू क्लासिफाई यू हेव गॉट डिफरेंट हेड्स ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन सो इन दिस मैनर नो भगवान समराइजेस द टोटल नॉलेज कंटेन्ड इन द स्क्रिप्चर्स द्वाम पुरुष लोके क्षरश्चाक्षर एव क्षर सर्वाणि भूतानी कूटस्थोक्षर उच्चते द्वौ इम पृथक राशि कृतौ पुरुषौ इति उच्चेते लोके संसारे इन दिस वर्ल्ड देर आर टू क्लासेस and both of them are called as purusha so imau dvau prithak rashi krutau under the two heads both of both the heads are called as purusha and sloke in this world samsare which are those purushas one is called as kshara purusha second is called as akshara purusha so the head of one column is kshara purusha the head of other column is akshara purusha now what is the kshara kshrati iti kshara ha vinashi eko rashi so under one head it is called as the kshara purusha which is vinashi so all those things which are uh, recognized as destructible constantly changing they are grouped under this title called as kshara purusha and second uh, akshara tad viparitah and the second is called akshara purusha tad viparitah means nakshrati iti akshara that which does not undergo any change it is never destroyed and what is that akshara purusha bhagavatah maya shakti hi so this maya or the prakriti is called as the akshara purusha so this is the beauty we started from sec 7th uh, chapter in 7th chapter what was told prakriti a feminine gender then we came in the 13th chapter kshetram a neuter gender what was called as prakriti bhumi rapo nalo vayu etc the same is mahabhuta nihankaro buddhira vyakta mevacha so what was called as the feminine in the 7th chapter what was called as the neuter in the 13th chapter is called as the masculine in the 15th chapter see akshara purusha isn't it beautiful and therefore this prakriti or the kshetra or the akshara purusha does not have any gender problem there is no gender bias because it is the same parmatmas glory there is no difference so nakshrati aksharah tad viparitah bhagavatah maya shakti Now what is this Maya Shakti Akshara Purusha? Akshara Khesya Purusha Sya Utpati Bijam. So what is the Akshara Purusha? Akshara Purusha is Mahabhuta Nyankaro Buddhihi and Eka Dasha Indriyani Dasha Ekamcha and Pancha Chendriya Gocharaha. This all thing falls in the Akshara Purusha. and the prakriti of the paramatma avyakta namni paramatma shakti karyanumeya sudhiyaiva gamya 
So this Paramatma's infinite potentiality is called as Daksha, uh, Akshara Purusha. So Aksharakhyasya Purushasya Utpatti Bijam Aneka Samsari Jantu Kama Karmadi Samskara Shrayaha Aksharaha Purushaha Uchate. Because it is in this Prakruti only, all the jivas who are carrying their aneka samsari jantu, who are carrying the various kinds of samskar on them, samskara shrayaha. So all those individual jivas with their samskara, they are stored in this mula prakriti or the maya of paramatma. This is called as the akshara purushaha. So, Dvau Imau Purushau Loke Kshara Kshara Evacha. Now see the subtlety of this mantra. This is called as water and this is called as Jalam. Ho oh, oh. ho, there are two things, water and Jalam. Yes. Now are we calling these two things, two names, to two different things or one thing. A person who doesn't know, he will imagine, oh, there are two things, water and jalam. But the one who knows, for him they are not different, they are one and the same. See how true it is. This example is to be given by Swami Ramadirtha. He said, once I went to a hotel, and there were four of them came together from different corners, not friends, sat on the same table and shouted at the waiter to get. One said, get me water. The other said, pani liyao. The third said, uh, manji niru. And the fourth one said, jolo khabed. And as a result, that Waiter went and brought four glasses of water for everybody. Why? Because he knew they may be talking the different things, but they were indicating the same thing in the same manner. Kshara and Akshara, changing and unchanging, these are nothing but the same Paramatma. Therefore, both of them are called as Purusha. See? Ornaments are gold and the potentiality in the gold to express in the form of the ornament, that potentiality is also the gold. It cannot remain independent of the gold. So in that gold, both are included. The cause of the ornaments, the potentiality, and the effect of the cause, the ornaments. See? Therefore, they are called as Purusha. But then why separately? Because we have not recognized the correct meaning of the Purusha. What is the reason? Because we are still shattered in the experiences of multiplicity. Therefore, Dvau Imo Purusha Oloke Kshara Evacha. One day when I was somewhere, one person was seeing that, you know, our uh, Kali Mata keeping the Lord Shiva under his feet. He said, look here, our Kali Mata is more powerful. Even Shiva has to fall below her feet. I said, yes, you are right. So I never get entangled with anybody on any arguments. No point in wasting our time. Because you will see, after you go through your life's experiences, 99% of the people, they come to the Mahatmas to pass time, to tell what they have studied, to argue, and beyond that there is no quest for uh, reality. That's it. Because you go, like you know, many people, 
because they have gone to some shopping there you have to buy something so let us buy is required or not doesn't matter so this person when he said like that as keeping quiet so the other person said no 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 shiva is more important not uh, kali and then both of them started and i was enjoying i enjoy people fighting why you should worry about it let them fight you get free entertainment then he said anji you please tell i said i'll tell to please whom you want to be please i can tell you so that you are also please i can tell you you are also please so this shiva devotee he said swami ji you should please me not that fellow I said all right then i said do you know the meaning of that kali mata keeping lord shiva under her feet it means if shiva goes away from there she will collapse she is supported by shiva without the shiva shakti has no existence she is uh, brahma shraya therefore because you don't see the foundation of a building because the foundation is buried in the soil do you call that foundation is useless and building is great remove the foundation yes swami ji now i know he was so happy about it and now the other fellow said yes swami ji this is bad you know you should not tell like that you know but without i said yes yeah, shakti is required if shiva alone is there he cannot create the world shakti is necessary so the greatness of the shiva is brought out only because of the shakti see so who is more important shiva or shakti naturally shakti <laughs> and then both of them became my enemy swami ji you are not telling the truth i said no i am not telling the truth i am trying to please you only the truth is you yourself you discover that the shiva and shakti is you nobody else therefore dwau imo purusho loke kharascha akshare evacha na kautau purusho iti ah swayam eva bhagavan the which are those two purushas bhagavan himself says kshara sarvani bhutani samastam vikar jatam ityartha so which are those which are constantly changing so you will see that the five great elements their instruments indriyani dashaikam cha and the tanmatras which go into the spate of grossification panchikaranam and thus become fit for the creation of this world so all of them starting from mahat downward up to the uh, grossified five elements all of them fall in the purview of dakshara purusha kshara sarvani bhutani and kutastho kshara uchchate and this avyakta namni parmesh shakti this divine potentiality of the lord is called as the uh, akshara purusha so kutastah akshara uchchate you know what is what happens in this uh, chapter while understanding when we talk about prakriti prakriti maya shakti our mind is so conditioned by the feminine gender and there to understand that the akshara purusha is maya or the shakti becomes very khatkhat inside the mind so what is the akshara purusha akshara purusha is kutaha rashihi ivasthitaha akshara is like the one who is um form rashi ivasthitaha so kuta rashi ivasthitaha like the um uh, mountain very firm not changing at all tashi avasthitaha athava the second meaning i like more athava kuta maya vanchana jimhata kutilata iti paryaya aneka maya di prakarena sthitaha kutastaha or this kutastha or the uh 
Kutastha is the one where this Paramatma is abiding in this Prakriti and the Prakriti is abiding in Paramatma in such a manner that nobody can recognize. Therefore, Kutastha Aneka Mayadi Prakarena Sthitaha it is something like you know, in the disguise of manyness that one reality called as the prakriti, the one reality called as the maya shakti is abiding in the total creation. And this maya shakti does not undergo any change. Now these two things, matter which is constantly changing and energy which doesn't change is this principle. According to the science of physics, it is said, matter cannot be destroyed and energy cannot be created. So that akshara is the matter or the prakriti or the paramatma shakti, maya shakti. And kshara is the constantly changing phenomena starting from mahat tattva downwards. These are the two kshara akshara purushau. These are the two kshara kshara purusha. Now in this, one more point has to be brought out. We have been talking only about this cause and effect aspect. That is the prakriti maya shakti is the cause and mahatattva downwards up to the pancha mahabhutas is the effect. So is this only or there is something more? Now that something more is the third principle and that is brought out in the 17th verse. Now in the 17th verse when we will see this, again like in the earlier Sarvastha Chaham Rudi Sannivishtaha Matta Smriti Dhyanam Pohanam Cha there the Jeeva Bhav which was brought out has to be recognized as Ishwaratva and we have to transcend beyond that. When we understand Mattaha Smriti Jnanam Apohanancha because of me only the Jagra Sapna Sushupti is who has the Jagra Sapna Sushupti I have. So when that I is recognized as individual it is the Jeeva Bhava. When the I is recognized as total, it is Ishwara. And when the I is recognized as the substratum of the Ishwara and the Jiva, then it is Parabrahma, Nirupadika Tattva. Because Ishwara and the Jiva can exist only with reference to the Jagra Sapna Sushupti. But Parabrahma Paramatma can exist independent of them. And therefore, he is the different principle. Now this is brought out in the 17th verse. Abhyam kshara kshara abhyam vilakshanaha kshara akshara upadhi dvaya doshena asprishtaha nitya shuddha buddha mukta svabhavaha purushaha tu anyaha and this is what is said in the 17th verse. Uttama Purushastvanyaha Uttama Purushastvanyaha Paramatmetyudarutaha Paramatmetyudarutaha Yolo Katrayama Vishya Yolo Katrayama Vishya Vibhartya Vyaya Ishwaraha First of all, we'll read what Bhagavan Shankara has to say and then we'll go digging deeper and deeper. Uttamaha Utkrushtatamaha Purushaha Now see, there are three categories we were told and wherever there are three categories, there are three degrees. Like, you know, the infinitive, comparative and the superlative. Good, gooder, goodest. So here, ut, uttara and uttama. So Uttamaha Purushaha means Utkrushtatamaha. There is none which is superior. Superior means higher. Urdhva Moola Madhashakam. 
that one urdhva the superior most the one which is the cause of the cause but which doesn't have any cause so uh, न जायते मृते वा विपश्चित नायम भूत्वा भविता वा न भूय अयो नित्य शाश्वतो यम पुराण दैट स उत्तम उत्कृष्टतम पुरुष तो अन्य ईज अदर दैन दिस टू पुरुषस सो द्वौ पुरुष आर लेफ्ट बिहाइंड नव द थर्ड फेलो एस कम तो अन्य विट इज ही अत्यंत विलक्षण एंड ईज अनदर पिक्यूरियर फेलो अत्यंत विलक्षण What is the peculiarity in him? Abhyam, in comparison to these two, he is atyanta vilakshana. What were these two? They were having the relationship between the cause and effect. Prakriti is the cause, and the mahat tattva downwards are the effects. And he is other than these two. That means he is beyond cause and effect. See, that means there is. no relationship ever possible in this absolute we can only merge in the absolute we cannot relate ourselves to the absolute relationship demands separateness but there is no separateness possible in this absolute reality so either you are one with the reality or you are out of the reality there is no half way like you know uh, the truth is never fractioned we cannot suppose you have to appoint some boy and he comes so we ask him hey where were you working earlier oh i was working with gupta ji acha then why did you leave your job no they didn't have want because they had excess of you know servants so they say we cannot keep you go so i have come to you he only told me to go to you okay come tomorrow i'll tell you and then i phone gupta ji gupta ji how is this boy whom you said oh he is very nice but is he trustworthy yes 80% you can trust him either you can trust him or you cannot trust him there is no percentage in the truth in the same manner this absolute reality is vilakshana vilakshana means there is no lakshana there is no criteria as a cause and effect as a relationship etc so vilakshana abhyam and this uttama purusha is called as paramatma iti cha is called as paramatma uttama purusha stvanya paramatma now परमहाज असौ देहादि अविद्या कृतात्म व्या आत्मा ही इज परम ही इज अदर एज वेल एज परमहाज असौ एंड एज वेल एज ही इज द एसेंस ऑफ देह आदि अविद्या कृता कृतात्म व्या सो ही इज सुपीरियर दैन हाइयर दैन दिस रिलेटिव वर्ल्ड ऑफ कॉज एंड इफेक्ट and also he is the essence of the cause and effect both the things so paramahacha he is the supreme most therefore paramatma and atmacha because deha adi avidya krutatma vyah atma so without his presence all the prakriti and the vikruti of the prakriti have no existence so therefore is called as the paramatma it is something like you know sweet and param sweet so we can have the different degrees of sweetness in the tea or the coffee so if it is a south indian coffee this example our swami is to give if it is a south indian coffee it will be a decoction mai and if it is a gujarati coffee it is only sugar mai so less sweet more sweet in the same manner when we say more sweet what we mean we mean the uh, contents of sweetness are more now atma and paramatma means what 
Atma means Atma and Paramatma means where other than Atma there is nothing. So Paramatma refers to the Uttama Purushaha, the Upadhi Rahita, attribute less, condition less, absolute reality is Paramatma. And he is Uttama Purushaha. And this Uttama Purusha alone is the substratum of the other two Purushas. So there are now three Purushas. Kshara Purusha, better than the Kshara Purusha. Uttara Purusha is the Akshara Purusha. And the third is Uttama Purusha. And all the three of them are called as Purusha. So, first a living being, then a jiva, and then the body. Three things. So, Uttama Purusha Atvanya Paramatma Ida Udarutaha. Now, Sarva Bhutana Pratyak Chetanaha Itiyata Paramatma Udarutaha Utta Vedanteshu. And why he is called as the Paramatma and where? Because he is the Atmacha Sarva Bhutanam Pratyak Chetanaha. He is the um, immediate conscious reality in all the beings. And therefore he is called as Paramatma Vedanteshu in all the Upanishads. So here, Jiva is nowhere seen. See? Kshara Purusha, all the changing. Akshara Purusha, he is Prakriti. Uttama Purusha, he is Paramatma. Then what happened to the Jiva? See? No, no, Mamai Vamsho Jiva Loke, Bhagwan has said. And also Bhagavan said that uh, Chaturvida Bhajante Maam Jana Sukrudino Arjuna Artho Jidnya Surartharthi Jnani Chavaratar Shabha. How do you say? Why do you take only this verse? Bhagavan went further also. Jnani tu Atmai Mame Matam. No, no, that we don't want to read. Because we like this duality and we like crying constantly. Many times, you know, when people come and they say, Swamiji, after having spoken to you, we feel relieved, you know, all our burden is undone. Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. This is all terrible thing. Just don't entertain it. You are not the jiva. Refuse it right in the beginning. See? Many people they say, Ramiji, uh, you know, for us you are everything and we can uh, you know, do anything for you. Really want to do anything for me? Yes, anything you tell. And then you tell, okay, promise, promise. Now give me two things. One, refuse to be miserable any moment in your life. And second, be always cheerful and happy. Okay, I will try. Even that also, they don't have the courage to say yes. See? That means we are so much attached to this relative miserable lifestyle. You know, this attachment is like what? This attachment is like the itch of eczema. Enjoy that, you know. No, Swamiji, no, that other couple has come over here. So, they were telling me, I said, Ha Mahatma Ji, how is your life now enjoying here? Swami Ji, ghar ki yaad aa rahi. I said, what is there in the house? No, both of you are old. Enjoy here, stay for one more month. No, actually, you know, the food and, you know, our grandchildren. I said, what is there in the food? The food is pretty good. It is good. We are not telling it is bad, but, you know, uh, our food... I said, see, we are eating the same food. He said, that is the difference between you and me. You can really manage whatever is available. But we cannot. And therefore, we like also our grandchildren come, this thing, that thing. Once we are accustomed to lead a kaka life, you can never live a peaceful life. 
therefore let us again and again realize this don't bring that jiva in between so akshara purusha akshara purusha and the parmatma and if you want to bring the jiva for your sake i'll bring <laughs> when parmatma is expressing through this conditionings as life and when the life is recognized as separate from one to another then the jiva bhava is created so there are two things one is jivatva and second is the jiva bhava jivatva is i am separate from you jiva bhava is living in the body as the body the living in the body as the body is a common phenomena everybody does the same whether human beings or animals but if we really want to recognize the divinity then we must rise above that we are living the body but we must not live as the body but we live through the body when this change takes place then you will see that the jiva has no place so now this paramatma uttama purusha what he does yo lokatrayam bhurbhuvasvarakhyam svakiyaya chaitanya bala shaktya now see here what i have been explaining you is for this reason chaitanya or chetana is the shakti of paramatma chetana or chaitanya is not paramatma and this is where is the basic difference between our vedanta shastra and all other philosophies because this chaitanya or the chetana is in opposition to the inertness and if it is opposition to the inertness so it is in the field of duality and the paramatma tattva is absolute therefore na tat sat na tat asad uchyate so how this paramatma who is beyond the akshara and the akshara purusha support this world so yo lokatraya ma avishya he enter this three world bhur bhuvaswara swakiye yay chaitanya bala shaktya avishya pravishya having entered bibharti swarup sadbhava matrena now see sadbhava and chaitanya bhav chaitanya bala so swarup sadbhava matrena by his very presence by his very presence bibharti dharayati remember now in the ninth chapter bhagwan told maya dhyakshena prakruti sujate sacharacharam हे तुनाने न कौंते जगत भी परिवर्तते मीनिंग व्हाट दिस अक्षर पुरुष एंड द मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ द अक्षर पुरुष इन द फॉर्म ऑफ दिक्षर पुरुष ऑल दैट इज पॉसिबल ओनली व्हेन दिस प्रकृति इज गेटिंग सपोर्ट फ्रॉम द परमात्मा एंड परमात्मा इज द इटर्नल सपोर्ट एंड इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ एवरीथिंग therefore bibharti dharayati supports only by swarup sadbhava matrena so he supports this world through his chaitanya shakti by his presence alone avyaha na asya vayo vidyate iti avyaha ishwaraha and avyaya the one although is supporting this prakriti and its creation he doesn't suffer any loss because he is ishwaraha sarvajna narayana kya ishara shilaha because he is called as ishwara mr narayan isn't it ishara shilaha controller of the total creation there are few more strokes to be given in this verse which we'll take in our next class 
ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णात्पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओम